Welcome to Lesson 2 for the TIGSY training course. Here we'll focus on data mapping between services in the UI. We'll create a Twitter search application using data mapping, custom CSS, and JavaScript. We'll start with a standard TIGSY application for a smartphone. Let's create the UI for our app. First, let's change the screen caption to Twitter search. We won't need a footer element for this screen, so let's just turn it off. Now let's add a text field and a button for searching. Okay, um, let's make the text field blue with a swatch and change the button so it's just an icon and no text at all. For the search field, we'll put in a default value as Tigsy. We'll give it the name search field and assign it a CSS class search field. For the, the button, we'll do pretty much the same thing. Now let's add a panel element that will represent a single tweet. Make it taller. Now drag image and three label elements in it. There's the image. To size that. Now we'll name the elements and um, the components and assign CSS classes to them. We'll have a tweet date, tweet from, tweet text, tweet image, and they'll all have their own um, respective CSS classes named after them. And finally the panel itself, when we get to that, will be called uh, just tweet. And there, that's our UI for now, and let's move on. Okay, let's click Save and Preview now. Uh, and it doesn't look too good, so let's try and improve it. Let's go back. Um, let's use Create New from the Project Navigator. We're going to create a new CSS called um, Styles. That Okay, let's create it, and then we're going to paste in some pre-prepared styles that we already had, and let's look at it now. It's pretty good now, but we need services to really make it an app. So let's head over and um, go to Create New from the Project Navigator. We're going to create a new service. Let's uh, select REST Service and call it Twitter Search. Here you can see the various REST service settings. Let's put in the URL for the Twitter search service. Here are the various types, the data types that you have for services. We're going to use the Tigger proxy and JSON. Next, we go on to the Request tab where we can add needed input parameter to the service. In this case, we're adding Q for query. Now let's see if our service works. In the Test tab, type in TIGSY into the Q parameter field and click Test. You should see a response from the Twitter service. There are two buttons in here, Automatically Create Service Response will store this response data for mapping. The other, Echo Response, will use this as a sample response for future testing. Now we can go ahead and start mapping a service to the UI. You're going to have to go to the Start screen and then open the Data tab. And here you add a data source by selecting Service, Twitter Search, and then Add. Next, click on Edit Mapping, and we're going to start with a request. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the text search field and drag it over and connect it with the Q parameter. Now let's add some kind of validation. Press the Add button. And then um, we're going to add a little JavaScript function to modify a value from the text field. It'll just uh, make Tigsy the default if the field is empty. Next, let's move on to the response tab. Uh, what we're going to do is we're you can see all the elements that we created previously, the tweet data, the tweet date, text, image, etc. So we're going to drag and drop the results onto the tweet element and then we're going to map the tweet data into the nested elements, the individual pieces like the date and the username and the image. 
as you can see it's pretty straightforward just drawing lines on the screen to make our search work we need to add a click event to the button to make the data mapping go so let's go back to that screen select the button go to the events panel the event is already set to click so let's select invoke service as the action and rest service as the target service data mapping now we just save okay let's preview things and see what they're like now click on the search button and after a second you should see a bunch of tweets oh good now let's put something in explicitly like hello to search for One thing that's missing though that we could improve is the date display. It's sort of the raw format. So let's fix things by going to data and then edit mapping. Let's find the tweet date element in here. And then once we find it, we're going to add some JavaScript. Instead of adding the whole function here, I'm going to put it in a central place by creating a JavaScript that's a part of the project and then I'm going to paste in the code right here it's just a simple function that parses the raw date into a day and month format now we can go back and use this function inside our mapping function this way and we just have to remember to save So let's save and preview our application again, and let's run it and see what the dates look like. They're beautiful. Let's add another feature to automatically search when the app is loaded. Let's go to the events panel for the, the screen, load as the event and as the action invoke service, and the rest service one that we set up will be the service. Now let's save the app again and see how it works. Right after the application is finished loading, we can see the search results. Let's change the input value to see if that works still. And it does. And there's more. Let's make the tweets hashtags, usernames, and external links clickable. We'll go to the still open helpers JavaScript file and put this code into it to add a simple tweet text parser that will wrap hashtags and usernames with span elements with a data search attribute. It'll also wrap external links with a tags with a target of blank to open them in a new window. Now save the file and uh, go to the Start Screens Data tab. Edit the mapping for the Twitter search mapping. Find the Tweet Text component and add a JavaScript handler by clicking on the Add JS button. And we just add the li a line to use the helper function we just made. And then we end it all by clicking Save and Return. Okay, let's go to the preview page and refresh it. And you can see now that the usernames, hashtags, and external links are all wrapped with HTML. We just need to add event handlers to make everything clickable. Let's jump back to the start screen in order to do this. What we'll have to do first is go to the data tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename the service to be called Twitter's search service. That's how it will be accessed in JavaScript. And then the next step is to go to the Design tab. And what we'll do is we'll, well there we go. What we'll do is we'll go and we'll um, add an event. We'll select the Start screen. The event will be Load. And the action will be to run a Java. OK, let's type in the code. Here we can use uh, Tixi's built-in helpers that allow you to use all the standard jQuery helpers. Uh, that's how we're going to get the screen and search field variables. And now we move on to add um, a click event delegation to spans that have the data search attribute.
Okay, and now an inside handler retrieves the span search data value and sets it as a value to the field. And then we use the um, Twitter search service. It has an execute method that we can pass our value to. And as the last step, we scroll the screen to the top when starting a request using a standard jQuery mobile method. And then you just have to click Add Event. OK, let's save. And then we're going to refresh the preview page. And there we go. Now we can click on usernames and hashtags and they'll automatically be searched for. Okay, I promise that this is the last thing we'll show in this lesson. Common events for services. So let's go to the data tab, bring up events, and we're going to select the service that we have, the Twitter search service. And there you can see the common events for it, success, error, and complete, which are just standard AJAX events for jQuery mobile. What we're going to do is we're going to add an error handler in case something goes wrong. So we select error as the event, run JavaScript, and then we'll just type in a simple alert message. Thank you for completing this lesson.